What is up guys, Euclid back here with you again and welcome to the unboxing of the new Halo Legendary Loot Crate, Quarantine Zone. Okay guys, Quarantine Zone. I haven't been following too much on what's handed, but it's pretty obvious this is a Flood-based uh, legendary crate which to be honest with you before I actually looked into it It almost seemed like the awakening would be more of a flood based crate But I guess the awakening was for the created so I guess that's kind of the point there Let's go ahead and take this uh, generic kitchen knife and get this thing open so we can see what's inside Same place as usual come on Euclid Get this knife out of the way so I don't cut myself And let's see what's inside Oh shit, look at that infected journal, honey. That's pretty sweet. I really like the artwork in these boxes. I honestly think it uh, it does them some decent credit. Some intel, we'll check that out here in a minute. You always fast forward it. Obviously the thing I wanna look at first is the figurine. So, that's pretty nifty. We'll go ahead and uh, pop that thing out, put it together. Oh, and look at the inside. Dare I say it, but if you look at the inside, it's infection form swarming at you, and it's from, oh my gosh, it's actually from the uh, from the uh, Halo 1 when you were uh, going into 343 Guilty Spark level. That can, that that secret bay, that's, that's Halo 1. It looks like a Halo 1 screenshot of them swarming you. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and pull this little guy out. A human UNSC Marine turned into a combat form. And not much assembly on these. It seems like there's less infected with an uh, assault rifle. Got his nasty claw arm, which is pretty developed. And there's a lot of weight to this thing. It's kind of bulky. Very nasty. Very ugly. Kind of the point. But look at this infection form. That is absolutely awesome. That right there, the detail of this little infection form and everything just kind of... Uh, makes my day. I really like that. I'm gonna pull the platform out here so we can get along with the rest of the crate. Okay. Hopefully I don't break anything like I did the last crate. I broke that grunt keychain. Couldn't figure out how to use it until I realized that it itself was a button. Very intelligent of me. Very cool. I like it. I dig it. And I like how the infection form can just kind of stand wherever it wants to. That right there, you'd almost want to buy this by itself. It's so detailed and cool. You like a lot of... <laughs> I can't describe it, but I just, I really love this, uh, the little barb in the back of it and everything else. And just, yeah, I think this is already my favorite thing about the crate is just the little infection form. Let's go ahead and set that to the side. Set these away. And down they go. Okay. Looking at the crate, I think one of the first things I see right here, the pin is a shotgun. I mean, naturally, it's going to be a shotgun. Pretty cool. Open it up. Little glow on there. Yeah, it looks awesome. And it looks more like a, you're going to like the Halo 3 and newer era shotguns and everything. That's kind of the vibe I get from it. Pretty cool. I've never gotten a, a golden or a limited edition pin. I just don't have luck. Well, I already grabbed it. I might as well open up this plush, which is obviously an infection form. They're really showing the infection form some love with uh, this crate. What? What's with the mouth? You have these little phalanges, which are kind of... I'd be careful because they feel somewhat cheap, kind of like something you'd get off of a, uh... oh, okay, I get it now. There's a Velcro, huh? <laughs> it's a Velcro sticky, so I'm gonna test it to my shirt real quick. <laughs> it's like sticking to my shirt, that's ridiculous, yeah. So this is just to kind of keep it from grabbing anything else, but uh, but yeah, a little stick to you plush. So I could even stick that to my rake costume's face. That would be hilarious. That's pretty cool. It's not super detailed, but as a plush, it looks okay. The the uh, tentacles and stuff. I would have almost preferred that they be made of the same material as the body, honestly. 
Because, you know, I want to I want to give props where it's due, but I also don't want to kiss too much ass. The phalanges, the little tentacles, and the grasp, and the obviously these right here. I feel like the feelers and everything, they could have been a little bit better made. But, you know, I'm still not going to complain too much. I really like that it's Velcro and it sticks to things. That's hilarious. But I think these could have been made a little bit better. But pretty cool. So moving on. Is that you back there with your infected friends? Let's go ahead and take a Oh, I wonder what's in that. That looks fucking sweet. All right. Look at that. Spartan Exterminators. Let me straighten out this shirt a little bit. There's like an indention from where it was packed. Spartan Exterminators and the... Uh, <laughs> I can't get the extension to stay out. If you look, the uh, Master Chief's holding a gravity hammer. And he's looking at the flood and saying, no, no, no. Or, ah, 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 for those of you that like old Jurassic Park movies. Spartan Exterminators. That's funny. Kind of goofy. I think the shirt could have had a, li a little bit be better design, too. I'm not here to bitch or complain, but people want honest opinions, not somebody that's just going to kick it and kiss ass so that they'll have someone follow them. I uh, I like it. I'm going to wear it. I like the shirts and make sure here. And as long as it's in my size, I'm happy. I love my shirts. You're giving me plenty of shirts to wear, and you're making me happy. Let's go ahead and look at this little poster here that came with it, which I'm pretty sure we already know what it looks like. Try to avoid showing you guys my codes. But we have none other than Pavium himself combating what looks like an infected engineer. So this is obviously going to be on the thumbnail. So if you just want to go to my videos and kind of like check out the thumbnails or zoom in on the screen or take a picture of the screen. And you kind of kind of, kind of look at that. But yeah, that's Pavium holding the line. So that's pretty cool. I really like that. Yeah, it looks like an infected uh, uh, Hellbringer. An infected uh, flamethrower troop from the US and UNSC because it's got that kind of dome. Eva almost Spartan helmet to it. But the bonus is a rec pack. Barf. Hey, look, I'm not a big fan of Halo 5. I don't blindly hate it. Some people love it, and I'm glad that they're having fun with it. But I really don't want rec packs. I'll probably use those for giveaways. I was given some good advice by that, some by some good content creators. Let's see what's in this little gem of a box. The, the last time I had a box similar to this, we got the uh, gr Brute Gravity Hand. Is there these needle shards? What? <laughs> these are needle shard pens. Are you serious? Where's the generic piece of paper? Come here. I need like a cheap piece of paper or something. Make sure there's nothing hidden underneath. I got needler pens. I need I need a stand to stick them in. All that's missing is that we have a stand of like a dead enemy or something, like a dead grunt that we could kind of stick them in and like put them like that. That would have made this ten times better if it came with a little stand for that. I'm not bitching. I love it. That's fucking hilarious. And also, I'm kind of wondering, these pens won't go dry, but the ink is dried up at the top, so they at least put a cap on them. So let's go ahead and uh, that is so cool. Look at that. Little needle shard pens. This see, this is the kind of stuff that I want. I want stuff that's going to be actually usable, but is a really big ode to the Halo series. I just want to make sure I can actually write on the damn thing. Yeah, just regular. Looks like black ink. No big deal. But yeah, and the box is cool. Thing is, I'm turning into a bit of a hoarder because I don't want to throw any of my boxes away. The art's too cool. Good thing I'll be getting a bigger house kind of uh, beginning of this year a bigger place to live because if I didn't well I'd be a hoarder and I'd have to get rid of some stuff so that's awesome let's go ahead and take a look at the last but not least let's take a look at the uh, Intel drop we have here so hopefully it's really I've been disappointed with some of the past ones we've had but as long as you give honest criticism I think that's what's gonna help them 343 Loot Crate and Microsoft, you know, send us better stuff. So right away, we see this. See this image right here. Subject, Denver. Name, Alo Sabuka. Born, December 2nd, 2454. Lineage, Sibylim Tet. Hair, gray. Eye, brown. Blood type, E+. Plus. Height, 221.4 centimeters. Weight, 104.3 kilograms. District, Terrace of Illumination. Province, Third Cloister, High Charity. Role, Vice Minister of Agnegation. It's got this meter reading right here that 38% left, 62. 
So I'm not sure what that meter means. Midnight facility lambda block cell 56. Cell 56. I don't know if this guy's a prisoner, but obviously, and you can see these runes, these covenant runes, which might just have the runes for covenant itself. Let me look at my uh, truth and reconciliation statue so I can kind of tell you guys. And it looks like. No, I don't. He has. It's different. Whatever his runes are, their own thing. But it may mean his name or something else. You can see the runes kind of on his forehead. So that's interesting. I'm sorry if it's not lighting up really well for you guys. I'm trying to show you. Other side is obviously blank. Here it says UNSC Priority Transmission 00143A23. Encryption code Umber. Public key not admissible. From Rodros Z. Midnight Security to Apollo SDM. Spartans. Subject, Subject Denver. Classification, eyes only, top secret. Apollo, you know the drill. We needed to validate encryption on all your access points before we open the terminal. Now that you have access, let's get this over with ASAP. I'm not sure how the hell you got clearance for this data, but things must be pretty jacked up outside if they're letting some year one Spartan 4 detective trawl midnight archives for an interrogation conducted five years ago. Not sure what you think you found, but it better be good. Some context is needed for this file. Denver was acquired in a cluster of debris on an irregular orbital pattern around Quiliest 4, roughly 21,494 clicks away from the installation 05. He was picked up by the Corvette Coral Sea while on patrol before Lisbon came online. When they found him, his vitals were rock bottom, close to flatlining. He'd been, rational, he'd been rationing nutrients and fluid supplies for weeks in a damaged skiff, which was functioning with minimal temperature control and only what we could carry with him during his escape from High Charity. Kinda figured where this guy came from was High Charity. The subject narrowly survived. Coral brought him back to the Midnight Facility, and he's been here ever since. I can count the number of living agents who know about him on one hand. Well, I could, before you requested access to Cluster 82B6. Denver is real, Spartan, but I'm a little lost on the value of specific excerpt requests. It was really a side comment and had little intel value to the interrogators at the time. What was the nature of your case, Apollo? Okay. Nothing on the back. January 15th, 2553, 1222.45.02, Midnight Facility, Oberon 5. Mentioned in an interaction you had before you reached the harbor, what was the nature of that interaction? Denver, I told this to the other. Oberon 5, yes, I know. I wasn't here for previous interview. Could you tell me? Pause. Denver, before I passed beyond the last checkpoint, a terminal activated. I approached it and heard a voice. Oberon 5, do you recall the time? No, as I said before, I cannot remember. I was running. We all were running. Oberon 5. From the flood? Extended pause. Oberon 5. Can you tell me the nature of the voice? Denver. It was a human. A female. I believe one of your artificial intelligences. A human AI? Yes. Are you certain? I am. How could you there... How could you there... Damn it, guys! I'm having an issue here. Oberon Five. How could you? How could there have been a human AI on High Charity? I do not know. Do you? Did she give her name? No. Did you see her? No. I only heard her voice, and only for a moment. I love that he's talking to this interrogated. Uh, um, he's interrogating this minor Sanshayun. Oberon Five. What did she say? Denver. She was in pain. There were no words. Over on five, what was wrong with her? Denver, I do not know. Perhaps she had encountered the flood. Over on five, but if she's an AI, what could flood do to her? Denver, have you, has your kind never heard of the logic plague? Are you fucking serious? Oh, that would be the absolute shit if that's what really ha motherfucker. What did you say? Even in victory, your species remains blind to the greatest realities of the universe. The Logic Plague was an instrument of the Flood during their war with the Forerunners. It corrupted intelligences. Oberon 5, as in deactivated them? Denver, no. They were sabotaged, or... Or what? Or worse, completely undone and brought to madness, made into a greater monster than even the Flood itself. Oberon 5, I find that pretty difficult to believe. Denver, 
Certainly, it is your species' greatest weakness. It was for this reason that artificial minds were verboten in the Covenant, lest our own creations turn against us at our most critical hour, a lesson your kind will undoubtedly learn at great cost. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Evidently, Cortana has the logic plague, and that's what he's suggesting. It doesn't mean she does, but right there. But if she's an AI, what could a flood do to her? Denver, has your kind ever heard of a logic plague? This was the best intel drop we've gotten, in my opinion, and I could not be happier that you guys sent it to us. Well, guys, I can say that although it felt a little lackluster at best, this crate not only delivered a few things that I really wanted, but a few things I didn't realize I wanted until I got them, such as the needler pens. I mean, that's, that's cool. I love the shards of needles that I can write with, and now I'm going to. That's absolutely amazing, and the only thing I'd worry about is when they run out of ink, can I replace them? But that probably won't be too hard of a chore. Another thing I like, the pen is awesome. It matches with Quarantine Zone, naturally your shotgun. The poster is sweet. I know you guys probably can't see it too well under here, but just the way it looks, just the way it shows off Pavium, who's probably my favorite of the two Jirohani brothers from Awakening the Nightmare. And honestly, is a better character than Atriox. Both of them are. They both have more of a character than him. And he's cool, but I think everybody kind of feels the same way, at least in the community that I associate with. So I really like that. The uh, I really like the plush flood. I kind of would have preferred if all of his tendrils would have been made out of the same material. But then again, I love that it sticks to clothes in general. Like, I love that it sticks to clothes and and fabric and stuff like that. I love that, so that's really cool. Another thing I'd like to say is the shirt's okay. Could have been probably a better design. Personally, I wanna pull out a shirt one day and it'd be a complete graphic. Like not one box where it's a picture, but the whole thing is a flood infestation. Maybe of a human base being over Rana, or maybe show high charity with the flood pouring into the dome of the actual world. But the best part about this wasn't even this. This thing almost won. This little guy right here almost won the best part about this loot crate, about Quarantine Zone. And this guy, he's funny as hell looking and nasty, but he has the caricature and he just looks so goofy. It, th these are basically caricatures of Halo characters. That's all they are. I liked him. But the best part about the loot crate was none of that. It was what we read in the Intel drop, in my opinion, and that has to be that Minor Prophet Alu Sabuka confirmed that it is quite possible that the Logic Plague is what caused Cortana to be the way she is. So we very well may see a saving grace with Halo 6 or whatever the hell they decide to title it with. Halo 6 whatever. Cortana may have the Logic Plague. And I am happy to say that that gives me hope for the future of the Halo franchise. I love Halo, and I never plan on giving up on it. I will be there until it feels like it used to for me. And I'm not talking about the glorious bungee days, as one people might want to accuse some people of saying. I love 343. And damn it, they're listening. And in reading that really gives me hope. That's the stuff I wait for. This Intel drop, good job. To any of you guys who are watching, good freaking job. I'm happy to say that. And uh, if any of you from 343 are seeing this or hinting it, I just want to let you know, I'm very happy with this crate, and who'd have thought that that piece of paper with some text on it would be the best part of it for me. That very well could save the story, and completely, I know you guys are trying, but now, you know, I have a little bit more faith in it. So thank you for renewing my faith in it. Guys, this has been the Halo Legendary Loot Crate Quarantine Zone. I can't wait for the next one, The Great Journey. And until next time, guys, I am Euclid. And I will see all of you Halo fans and all you Loot Crate collectors in the next video. See you guys.